If you think about it, there are some things in this world that aren't meant to be scary. But, um, most often they are. I mean, take Candle Cove, for instance. The guy who created the show seemed like he was trying to make an innocent enough children's show. I mean, creepy, but innocent. I have a bit of a history uh, with that damn show. June 24th, 2010. I'm trying to find out more about Candle Cove. I mean, I know it exists because I watched the first, like, three episodes, but I got bored after the fifth one. I heard that it was getting a new season, and I remembered the show. I remembered it as nothing but static to come on. I didn't know if they were messing with me or not, because Candle Cove is definitely not static. It's something more than that. Something terrible. June 25th, 2010. After writing the first entry, I decided to dig up uh, some news about Candle Cove, possibly even find some episodes. Well, I was on the internet about, I don't know, midnight, when I received a text message from someone with a name like this, 01110001011. And the message said, when decoded from the binary to text, meet me. And what did he mean, meet me? Was I supposed to meet whoever that was somewhere? I don't know. June 26, 2010. I found an episode of Candle Cove. It was from season one, and it was at least the fifth episode. It's funny because I don't remember ever seeing something like this. The episode I saw depicted it being Janice's birthday, and the, the pirates and the skin taker and the rest of the characters sang happy birthday, and then the skin taker broke off into this weird song which I, I assumed to be called One Year Closer. When he finished the song, all the puppets kind of stared at the camera, and their eyes glassy, and then <laughs> then out of nowhere, skeletons came out. Yes, you 4chan fans, you can literally say skeletons popped out. <laughs> well, the scary thing about it was that the skeletons kept grabbing near Janice's breast area and touching her butt and <laughs> June 27th, 2010 I contacted someone I met over the internet who apparently watched Candle Cove when it was on TV and he told me to come to his house and interview him and at first I was I was wary but then I realized that this was Candle Cove we were going to talk about when I got there, I noticed that his house was immaculate. But that was mostly because he had nothing but a TV and a bed in his house. It looked like he didn't have any food in his house either. I mean, when I asked him questions, he kept staring off into space. And it took me a few seconds sometimes, even minutes, to get him to come back to Earth and keep talking to me. When I brought up the skin taker, he just screamed and fell over, unconscious. I tapped him, but it, it seemed as if he wouldn't wake up for hours. After that, I mean, this this might sound creepy, but I'm I'm doing anything I can to find out about T Candle Cove. Um, after that, I I went upstairs and searched his room for anything that has absolutely anything to do with that damn show. I found concept art, but. It was singed. I could barely even tell what it was. There was also a note that I, I'll read that, um, it's from this guy who lived across the street from me, and when I was younger, I'll describe it better in the, in the next entry, but for now, I, I need some rest. June 30th, 2010. Wow, I slept for nearly four days. Jesus. I don't even remember doing that ever. I mean... I remember some dreams that I had during the four-day sleep period thingy. Skin Taker was chasing me down along dark hallways. Other villains from the show came around the corner. 
First there was um, Horus Horrible, then Milo, and then, then something terrible I thought I'd never see again. He was tall. He, he was dressed like a normal man, but he was also decaying terribly, and I, I could literally smell his terrible burning flesh, and he, he stumbled around the corner. The man was some strange old guy who lived on my street when I was about ten years old, and he would sometimes go onto my lawn when my parents weren't home and stare through my window. I remember his house burning down about two years later when I, I was home alone. Apparently it was suicide. I don't want to know what made him burn his house down, but I feel... Maybe, maybe, maybe I do. I'm going to his house tomorrow to look for clues. Uh, um, I forgot something. Um, here's the note I found in, in the man's house. Dear Lucille, I don't know how much longer I can take this. The nightmares are becoming more frequent, more disturbing. Most of them are of him. But all of them have the same picture of that kid who lives across from me, with his eyes gouged out. Only there was a way I could warn him about that damn Candle Cove show before it's too late. Sincerely, Bill. June 31st, 2010. What I saw in that house will most likely not be, not, um, make me sleep, or uh, not let me sleep for, uh, for a couple days, maybe, maybe longer. The house was, um, the house was nothing but a patch of dirt now, but I know better. I dug into the dirt, and soon I hit something, and the, the material scraped against my fingernails as I, I, I looked... I took the packed dirt off the top of it. it. It was a note. It read, Percy was a pirate. He was the greatest one around. Percy was a pirate. He never wore a frown. Until one day, Mr. Skintaker came to town and took all the ch other children down to his workshop. Where he would chop and sew skin to his new cape. And always look for new children to write. This is getting disturbing. July 1st, 2010. I'm regretting getting involved in this. Every time I get home from school, I swear I can I can hear the screaming of those poor children. There's their skin ripping, their flesh being taken off their bones and stuck onto the, the skeleton man's cape. I'm ending this now, and thank you, everyone who helped me... I don't know what I'll do after this. Maybe I'll I'll even destroy this notebook, but one thing's for sure, I'm I'll never search for this damn show at all ever again. <laughs>